This is Cycling Stories and today I bring you five more cyclists who have ruined their careers. From achieving triumphs and praise to end up begging or committing crimes. So give a good hard like to the video if you don't want to end up like them and if you wish them the best. And maybe subscribe. And now yep, let the show begin. Yevgeny Berzin this cyclist son of the Leninist motherland is one of the greatest bomber legends of the 90s. As if he were Geraint Thomas himself, he went from winning world track championships for the Soviet Union to competing in the Grand Tours in his second year as a professional. Our favourite Russian chunk of coal was a specialist in time trials, and always with his blonde hair in the wind. He went on to win one of the best tours of Italy in history in 1994 against Marco Pantani and Miguel Indurain, who had to settle for third place at the peak of his form. That same year he won the Liège, and in 1996 he even fought for the overall of the Tour de France, wearing the yellow jersey for several days. But as soon as the hematocrit controls arrived, Good old Berzine practically disappeared from the map, never to be seen again, well at least in the peloton. In the end, the guy has ended up squandering all the money he earned in his career as a cyclist, and today is dedicated to the peddling of second hand automotive vehicles, with a strong residual physical appearance, and one that hints at a decline full of fast food and water with mystery, poor Berzine. Hector Julio Patroyo This glory of Colombian cycling, very popular in his country for having been a member of the legendary Manzana Postabon team back in the silver age of coffee cycling during the 80s. He won prestigious races such as the Tour of Costa Rica and the Vuelta a Nicaragua, great achievements that allowed him to earn a few coins with which to live. Our good man decided to invest those monies in four buses in which important celebrities of the countries travelled, such as Shakira, the EPA Colombia, or the current cyclist Nairo Quintana, among other fortunate clients. Life seemed to be going very well for our friend Patoroyo, but recently he had to appear on television, all because the corrupt government of Bogota keeps his buses confined in parking lots. So despite having earned a lot of money with his legendary career as a cyclist, these government restrictions have meant that he has to beg to put food in his mouth. So Hector Julio, we support you to recover. Juan Miguel Mercado This Spanish cyclist, very famous in the Iberian Peninsula for standing out as a talent from such an early age in the legendary Banesto team. He promised to be a great ear to champions such as Shava Jimenez and Coque Uria, and his climbing ability was as good as his charisma. Let's listen to him today. This mechanical broccoli won prestigious races such as the Vuelta a Burgos and the Semana Catalana, and even won stages in the Tour de France and the Vuelta a España. And there he even finished in the top 5 in the general classification in 2001. El Vato even pulled off a heist for Patrick Lefebvre when he was signed with the great Pecharo Man in the 2004 season by Quickstep. But these weren't the only heists that he has allegedly carried out, as he has been linked to 16 robberies in which the thieves took more than €120,000. Maybe that's why Wami has returned to compete at amateur level with Broccoli Mechanico at 42 years of age three lustrums after his retirement at only 29 years of age. That's knowing how to reconvert, so congratulations boss, sure you can sweep it in the international scene. Ricardo Rico Known as La Cobra, this Italian cyclist was one of the products of the Max Dean factory that quickly became a legend, and at just 24 years of age, with blood well charged with love and EPO, Rico came to fight stages and general classifications in Grand Tours, being one of the greatest promises of his generation. 
The Reptile had his best year in 2008. And while Alberto Contador won coming back from the beach, Ricardo finished second in the Giro d'Italia, winning two stages, the classification for the young riders and the applause of the public, who saw in this young man the reincarnation of Marco Pantani. Just a month after those exhibitions, he decided that he didn't give a damn about anything, and he decided to dope himself up with the most unspeakable things to attempt the most hilarious Tour de France assault of the 21st century, the legendary 2008 Tour de France. The same one in which Rico also won two stages thanks to superhuman attacks. The press thought that they were looking at the greatest cycling spectacle in the last 20 years, with a lot of style and quality, but in truth his talent was pure blood in the vein. Obviously Rico was disqualified after failing the anti-doping controls, which were much more accurate than in the US Postal era. Rico quit cycling for two years, but thought that it wasn't enough, and he decided to come back with very healthy methods in the Dutch Vakken Salet team, such as transferring his own blood to suffer from kidney failure. So much so that the boy couldn't even speak, poor thing. He ended up being banned for life, so that today he sells ice cream in Spain and is a COVID denier. A story even more tragic comic than that of the legendary Miguel Bosse. Bradley Wiggins The gold medal could not go to any other than a British sir, Mr Bradley Wiggins. A true legend that thanks to chemistry could go from not climbing a bridge to win the Tour de France, the Olympic Games, the World Championships and become an all-rounder capable of winning in all possible scenarios. A guy who, as you see in the pictures, was full of charisma. However, he soon got mixed up with bad people in the dark world of the night, where he looked about as comfortable as his compatriot Amy Winehouse every time that he had to get on stage. Wiggins ended up absconding from the Sky Team after getting on badly with many people. So he created his own cycling team where he failed miserably and even in a total fit of madness decided to run for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics four years after retiring. But not in cycling, in rowing, with a result even more erotic than Tommy Lee with Pamela Anderson. After drinking a few juices today he looks more like Conor McGregor than ever, proving that the midlife crisis has hit this British cycling legend pretty hard. At least the guy earns a good salary working as a commentator on Eurosport, and sporting a bald head like a true cycling legend. Hope you give the video a nice like and we'll see you in the next show.